Uh, coming back into session, we're now in our uh, regular library commission meeting. Um, calling that to session, uh, convening that meeting. Uh, let's start with um, approval of the minutes. Do I hear a so moved. motion? Second. Second. Okay, any modifications or discussion about the minutes? Okay, public comment. All in favor of approving? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, correspondence and um, press coverage. Do we have anything that needs to be discussed under correspondence and press coverage? Oh, I haven't even looked at it. Anybody have any comment? It's here. I don't know whether it's in there, but in the press coverage, my wife's picture was in one of the trainings for the uh, e-books. Oh, good. Okay. And the PD. Okay. Uh, any public comment on either correspondence or press coverage? All right. Uh, oh, let, um, no, report. the reports. Okay. Commission uh, comments, major information items, and lab activities. Do we want to go around the... Um, just start with, I'm going to skip you on this one, Paul, since you have not been to a lab meeting okay. yet. Uh, and let's just go around, Susan. Uh, yeah, let me just take my here. So let's see, I went to the Cloverdale lab on the 12th. Discussion regarding, and Sandy was there as well, um, regarding the parking lot and curb painting red, um, should it, because it's not red anymore where it should be, and should it be yellow in front of the door, basically, and then should they put up signs telling people not to park where they shouldn't be parking, because people park where in the driveway and it blocks others. So discussion about restriping, painting, and, you know, getting the parking. Uh, I think Sandy was going to check with the facilities on our ability to help there. Um, there was discussion about participation in the lab conclave, and I know that they're excited about that. Um, there was discussion regarding kids using the library and the high school kids who don't know how to do research and look up books and don't have them, kind of the library skills, and then, um, you know, possible topics for the lab meeting having to do with kind of that that function of educating students because they don't have school libraries. Um, Sandy gave a, an overview, uh, reported to the group about the e-book usage and very good response to the e-book uh, e training sessions. There was a lot of programs discussed. Um, they're having their digital petting zoo on March 23rd, and they're also having an art show in May. I'm not going to go through all of this, but um, they had they talked about something that I thought was really interesting, and they called it a blind date book club, where they wrapped up books, adult books. I mean, books for adults, not kid books, <laughs> and and then like I guess. I guess people kind of borrow, check out the books without actually knowing that they, they have like a general description or maybe they know the topic, but they don't actually know the book. They're in brown paper bags. So it's like a surprise. Oh. I thought that was kind of a fun idea. And um, um, the, there was a number, the repair. Repairing the library roof is the number one priority for the city of Cloverdale's public works. So that's really great that the city was embracing their responsibility there and rating it number one out of their priority. And then the, they have a farmer's market, a Friday night event in town in Cloverdale, and the library has participated in the past uh, with the lab and the friends, and they're going to participate again. Cloverdale. Okay. All right. Uh, Greenville hasn't met since our last meeting. They meet um, the second week Wednesday of March coming up, and they will be 
happy to have, hopefully everybody will approve, the two new um, Guerneville Lab members. Uh, Sebastopol has been busy. They had their public forum on, the, on Wednesday, February 13th. Unfortunately, I was only like, able to stay for half an hour, but Sandy was there. And I think they had about 30 people, and Matthew Rose, the new branch manager, um, gave a, a nice talk about himself and some of the programs that he's planning for the, um, to have at the library. And um, I think that was really well received. Um, Dina Bliss from Soka Soul was there, and I think I missed her presentation. I think I left before she started. Um, and Judy Rice, the president of the lab, um, was the, the chair of that meeting. So I, I had about 30 people, and I, I thought it was, um, you know, people asked some nice questions. There was a young woman who um, raised some ideas about um, reaching out to the youth and, you know, teenagers in the community. Um, and I wrote them down, but I left my, <laughs> my I notes. I don't have my notes here. But it was, um, I thought it was really, she had some good ideas that she shared with people. Um, then the Library Advisory Board met on February 6th, and they've been um, working still on the handbook. Um, and I asked that they, you know, I said the commission had suggested that maybe they could share it at the Library Conclave, and they were happy to do that. Um, they discussed having a clerk to take the minutes instead of making the branch manager do that. And I think that they um, will review that in six months. They didn't, nobody stepped right up and said they wanted to do that. It's a you know, significant commitment, I think. Uh, and Matthew said, you know, it was part of his job description, so he didn't mind continuing to do that. Um, Let's see. Oh, they, uh, the Library Advisory Board is working on a plan to get information from the public, to communicate with the public about library issues. So they've come up with some good ideas. They're thinking of doing some um, outreach through um, um, surveys, and they want to tweak that because uh, they don't want to weigh it one way or the other. They don't want to try to um, elicit the answers that they're looking for so it's a you know it's a an art to writing a, a really good survey um, but there will be a response box in the library permanently for people to share their ideas and so they move it right along uh, our lab hasn't met um, but um, a couple of things are going on there's a art show going on currently um, there uh, they've just had a book sale just ending and uh, just for information, there have been some difficulties with people camping uh, outside the library, and particularly in terms of leaving their camping, their gear uh, against the building and so forth. But there's been a lot of support uh, in the city to help solve that problem, and I think it's moving along pretty well. Is that true? And um, I just drove through the neighborhood this morning, and I could make it down Washington without running into about 15 different construction projects. But they just had a bad weekend with um, a fair there, and so part of the parking lot was taken up with the fair. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Mary Evelyn? Um, at our last lab meeting, the, we have a new city council liaison uh, who is going to be wonderful. And we had some discussion of um, the crosswalk and where the crosswalk is, which is not ideal. Um, and it's a complicated issue because that's Highway 12. Um, so part of it's the city, part of it is um, uh, Caltrans. Um, it, it, so um, I don't expect any quick resolution uh, on that, but um, David promised to make it sort of a front and center item. Um, we also had a book sale, um, and uh, the guy who's in charge of the book sales, now Mary Evelyn, we only have. 275 banana boxes of books, so the numbers are going to be yeah. way down. And, um, so it, it was not the highest it's ever been, but it was $10,500. So we were happy about that. Tom? Uh, 
Tom? Well, neither of our uh, of my labs uh, met yet. They're both coming up in, in uh, March. Uh, one thing I was very pleased to see that the uh, public room in the library in Healdsburg is being used uh, to help Latinos file income tax returns. Oh, they, people are coming in and they have these bar not barriers, movable partitions, and people can go in and sit down and uh, sp Spanish-speaking people helping uh, these folks fill out their income taxes. Uh, that, that's been nice to see. We have a book sale coming up in March. Okay. And um, Santa Rosa Lab has not met since the last um, uh, committee commission meeting, but I would just one more time encourage everyone to talk to their labs about what the role of the lab should be and to contact their JPA review committee member or to ask to come speak to the JPA review committee if they have a strong sense of that. But the role of the labs is going to be one of the things that is under construction. So I would encourage the lab members to actually get involved in this. OK. Um, subcommittee reports. Uh, the JPA subcommittee. Well, uh, we haven't actually met. The, the scheduling has become a little bit of an issue in that the um, JPA review committees tend to be the Friday before we have the um, commission committee. So we, we met last Friday, and uh, I'm happy to go over. Uh, there was a, a lively discussion on what equity of services should be and what it is. Um, currently is and what it might look like. Uh, it seemed to me, and, and Helena and Sandy were both there watching, so they can jump in. And, and um, But it seemed to me that this group is heading towards trying to identify what baseline of core services that would be required uh, everywhere would be, and then how to allow cities or a private entity who wanted to fund enhancements of those baseline services. Um, so there was a discussion about whether they wanted to allow that, and it appeared that the group does want to allow it. They understood that there were direct and indirect costs, and they all seemed to agree that both direct and indirect costs would need to be covered by whoever was funding the enhancement. Uh, they also agreed um, on the concept that you would need a certain time commitment from whoever was funding the enhancement that you don't want to, you know, expand the hours for two months and then get that in place and the work it entails to get that in place and then undo it. Although there was not, I didn't feel <coughs> consensus about what the minimum time frame should be. Some people thought a year, some people thought longer. So there, that I think will the, the um, equity of service discussion was not completed and will continue uh, at the next meeting, which is March 22nd. March 22nd. So, uh, and then the meeting after that is going to be May 3rd. They've been playing around with dates. And then there's a May 31st meeting. So at March 22nd, they may or may not finish up the discussion of equity of services. And, and then in theory, at the May 3rd meeting, they'll start talking about governance, but that depends on whether they finish equity of services. The discussions, I think, have been very, um, they've been broad. Sometimes they've wandered towards policy, but overall, I think they're, they're good discussions and they, they're talking about things that need to be discussed. Um, I, do you have a, a sense of anything? I, no, just as I said to you, I think there was really good clarification about you know, what the group was there to do um, and uh, the authority that, that they have versus the authority that the commission has. Um, the commission has the authority to change the bylaws and not the JPA, as I think we all know here. But we can change the bylaws, and they talked about making, you know, making recommendations about the bylaws um, that would perhaps make them more specific about some, some areas, not quite as general as they are. Um, that that might be a helpful way to clarify, you know, different actions that the commission's responsible for. Um, yeah, that was uh, county council 
Ann Keck is the County Counsel for the Board of Supervisors uh, on the JPA, and she did talk to the review committee about thinking about putting uh, what you want to put in the JPA versus what uh, should go in the bylaws, how easy you want it to be to change different things, how much policy you really want to stick into the JPA. She was, I think, discouraging of actual policy going into the JPA. And, and her thought, and I, I agree, and I think most people at the table agreed, was you structure the JPA to direct the bylaws to come up with a policy about whatever the issue is. So you say, you know, the bylaws need to include A, B, C, but you don't actually state the policy in the JPA because that way it's subject to change as the library changes without having to readopt the whole JPA. Right. Like for example, the, there shall be a lease for every building that right. the, you know, the library uses. But what the particulars are of each lease would be left to the bylaws, you know, you know, a little bit more specificity in there, more of a general direction in the JPA. I actually have um, sort of a emerging concern yeah because when they were talking about services I, I was tempted to comment that the size of the facility drives the size of the collection and technology so that in places like Sebastopol and Windsor and Northwest you know every time they get a new book they have to basically pull an old pull another one to make room and the number of computers <coughs> is dependent on the size of that library and there really hasn't been any discussion about the section of the JPA that deals with who's responsible for making sure I mean for building buildings because there's nothing there's there's no sense of commitment on the part of anyone to making sure those are adequate buildings and I think that would have been a good thing to, I mean, I, we can raise that at the next one since the discussion is going to be ongoing, but I think that is important. There was a recognition by the group, and I think we all recognize you're never going to have equity of buildings because cities have different uh, availability of funding and different levels and, and different populations and, and different tax bases, et cetera. So, I mean, you can't require the same square footage for each and every library, so if buildings drive what type of services can be applied, then you need a JPA that realistically recognizes that fact and figures out, I think of it as equity of access. Right, and I think so, but there was discussion right. about the fact that, say, Sebast Sarah Gurney talked about Sebastopol being limited. Well, we purposely put in more computers because that's what the staff asked to put in. You know, so that meant you took out some of the space for materials. Right. Same thing in Sonoma, because there's such a demand for those computers. So it's, it, it's, it's not on, we don't have a lot of flexibility given the nature of our buildings. And you know, I had put this aside, but <coughs> this is the facilities master plan. <coughs> and actually, I, I, you know, <coughs> Don had tried to send it out, but I think it's an important document to know about. And there are certain things, um, for instance, this rule of thumb is that you ought to have 0.6 square feet per capita. In other words, a library ought to, size ought to be 0.6 square feet based on the service population. So, I mean, there's some things like that that came up, but nobody is really responsible for making sure that buildings get built or trying to make sure. Nobody has, it just says may in the JPA. So that's one thing. Um, somebody was assuming we pay rent in their comments the other day, and I was a little concerned about that. Last but not least, I think they veered away from it, but I was a little concerned when they sounded like they were going to, even for the bylaws, try to specify things about technology because technology has moved so rapidly. So those were just some of the notes I made during the... Okay. Listening to this, one of the things about, um, for lack of a better term, enhanced services in different communities. Um, and, I, I'm, you know, the, the, uh, this, the background funds are important. But I think the other piece that's important is the relationship with the uh, labor organization. And, the, I mean, if you were to offer more hours on a temporary basis in some library, that does seem to be almost con contractual issue and needs to be looked at. I think Teresa actually mentioned that. Have yeah. you? Okay, good. Uh, she, it came up 
and I, I know Teresa made the comment that you, you know, you were sometimes limited by your labor agreements. Right. So there'd have to be some recognition that that has to be dealt Teresa with. Teresa Barrett. Barrett, Barrett, the councilwoman from Petaluma, who's okay. the Because I think not everybody knows who's right. who. Yeah, thank you. So um, in terms of the JPA <coughs> subcommittee, we have not met, and so we need to think about if there's some action or something that the um, commission wants to, any information we want to give. Um, so hopefully we'll have a meeting. Well, we, if the May, May 3rd meeting is, is on um, governance, yes. we, I think, might have some input on that. Well, and you have the white paper, and it might be right. a good idea to, re to call their attention to that, too. Right. Or even draft something with more specificity in terms of just suggestions from the commission itself. And, and that's what the white paper is supposed to be. Another piece that seems important to me is it seems change is coming. And I'm, I'm hoping that somebody is thinking about the implementation of the change and how it, if we have a completely <clears throat> different sense of governance or representation, do we just, that happens or what's the process for the changeover? That. Yeah, I, and I think that's something that will be discussed when we get to the governance portion. I mean, this is not a thoughtless group. I don't think no. they would suggest that they reconstitute the commission from the ground up all at the beginning because that would be a little chaotic. I suspect it'll be a rolling. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. It could all change at once. And believe me, I've thought about that. Well, if it did, I, I guess two of the city, uh, two cities already have appointments, so though there would be no reason to change those. Well, unless they make them elected. Oh. Which is About not it. beyond the realm of right. possibility. They, yeah. We'll see what governance says. All right. Um, uh, Julia, are they clear on? Um, when we say equity of service, are they clear on what we think that means? Sandy presented a um, paper on a, a short, uh, I thought, very clear <coughs> and helpful paper on equity of service. I have said on more than one occasion, because sometimes you have to repeat things, that equity of service is not identical. I, you know, the identical hours now are not because of equity of service requirements, but because of budget. And I've tried to make that very clear so that they understand that, you know, but I keep saying equity of access. And so... Well, and actually, Bo Simons, who was sitting next to me, made a good statement. Just as the Constitution says all men are created equal, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes I think the thing to remember is that equity of service is a goal and right. a sort of a value that's important and not necessarily something that you say this is the boxes you have to fit right. in. And I think part of the, the county council um, talked to the committee about uh, the current JPA not allowing any enhanced services by uh, outside groups. And um, she's For seen... For one branch. For a single branch. For a single branch, right. And and she tied that to equity of services. So I think that, you know, stuck in people's minds as some, but um, I think they, they know what we think it is. They're grappling with what they think it is. And I think everyone was on the same page with wanting equity of access. Certainly nobody was suggesting that they could enhance services for their city and preclude anyone else in the county from coming there. I mean, if they offered enhanced services, they were recognizing that that would be available county well, to all residents of the county, but at their location. And I think that they also understood the sustainability um, right. that needed to be part of enhanced services. It's not just a one-year deal. If you're going to increase the services, the public does not want to have a teeter-totter kind of effect. Right. So, um, all right. And then uh, moving on to um, the Re revenue subcommittee report. 
Um, we don't have much to report. We continue to meet monthly. We met with um, Sandy and uh, Mark Walsh. Um, Susan and I, Evelyn, Mary Evelyn, wasn't able to come. But it's very helpful, and Mark gave us a, a good overview of the financial documents and um, answered our questions. And did you have any? Yeah, I, I just find it uh, helpful to be able to kind of meet in that smaller forum and, um, you know, <laughs> it's similar to what we're doing here, but just get a kind of a pre-look and ask questions about certain line items and making sure there's there's nothing in there that's, um, you know, surprising. Right. And just have another forum to just focus on the, on the financial. I All thought it was really helpful because you also su suggested some things that we be we should be ready to answer, which sort of gives us a head leg up to kind of get things organized. So that was helpful to us. I actually have a request of the Revenue Committee as your representative on the J JPA. Um, I think it would be very helpful because on the JPA, there it's not been an in-depth discussion, but one or two members have suggested that a revised JPA allow the library some roads to raising revenue in addition to property taxes that we would receive. And I would love if the Revenue Committee could come up with sort of some suggestions, concrete suggestions that we might present to the um, Review Committee to include. Well, I think that what they're talking about is is the, the authority to raise right. funds, not right. specifics about right, right, it. Right, right, right. I mean, the authority to do bond issues right, right now, but not... But what else would we want the authority to do? What else could it look tax. like? What else might we want to include in the joint powers agreement that would allow us access to additional revenue or at least a road to access if Actually, not I think there's something in the white paper too already right. on that topic. So you might want to relook at that too and see right. if that has something. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, public comment on the reports. Okay, so now we're moving on to uh, annual election of officers. Um, nominations? I'd like to nominate Tim as chair and Susan as vice chair. As a slate? Slate. Okay. Additional nominations? Okay. All in favor of the slate on the table? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Congratulations, you guys. Julia, you've been a terrific chair. Thank yes, you. Yes, that's. Thank I you. think we need to thank the chair. It's <laughs> yeah. been interesting. Okay. So uh, let's see. What do we have next? The consent calendar. We have one thing on our consent calendar. Actually, I think you have three. Oh, yeah, yes, we have three things. Does uh, anyone ha have anything they want moved from the consent calendar? No? Okay. So we adopt it. Yeah, we don't. Kia is going to take care of somebody's parking meter. Okay. Uh, it's a service we provide in addition nice. to the mini. Um, and then there are no action items by resolution. Um, we have one action item by motion. So uh, do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay. And this is for the uh, library um, that we authorize the chair, which would be <coughs> Tim to uh, send a letter to um, Senator Lois Walk supporting um, something that would make it easier for um, special taxes and um, revenues for library operations to be. Uh, so that was the question I had. Did it apply only to libraries or did it apply? I mean, the first sentence sounds like it applies to any entity, but then the rest of it's all about libraries. I know that actually was probably my fault. Um, it only, her SCA 7 only applies to public libraries. Okay. But I think what will end up happening 
because there are any number of different groups seeking to have the threshold lowered that it may end up being combined with others. So, um, but right now her, her, her um, proposal is only for libraries. So we have a motion to authorize our chair to send a letter of support for that particular um, bill. Second. Okay. Move. Uh, discussion? No. Public comment? Yay. No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any I'm opposed? saying yay for, the, for her effort. She yes. actually represents the Sonoma, a part of the southern part of the county, too, even though she lives over in Yolo County. <coughs> Their districts are so strange these days. Yes, they are. Thank you, Mr. Jerry Mander. Um, okay, so now we are on to discussion items. This is the... Um, Management monthly activities. This is where the performance management was supposed to be. Right. And we got a copy now. Yeah. This has been provided to us. Does anybody have uh, questions or comments on the monthly activities? Just, um, I add, added information in there and also a document about the Staff Innovation Fund project which um, the staff who are attending are really excited about. It's nice, because it's a nice positive. It sounds like a great program. About how many people are doing 21. Out of our staff of? 138 FTE. We were able to send everybody who was interested. We, we had 21 people who wanted to attend, so they had space for all of them. That's one place where Keo has had to do some real juggling to make sure we had coverage for all of them. Um, but she graciously did that. And I see that um, our current contract is only extended through February 28th, but we don't have another meeting until March 5th. What, what does that mean? When we extended that to February 28th, we didn't know um, we wouldn't be meeting until after that date. So we have since sent the union another um, extension, proposing it to be through March 25th, uh, which is your next meeting. And have they responded? <coughs> not yet. Do we anticipate that to be a problem? No, not at all. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Questions? No? I wouldn't, wouldn't plan on anything anytime. Okay. Okay. So, uh, public comment? All right. Lion. Uh, library. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, informal uh, evaluation of the video recording of our meetings. How do we think it's going? Uh, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Were we going to get a report on the additional costs we asked to have it looked into as I to... I think I gave, we gave that to you a couple of meetings ago. I don't think so. As to if we were to go <coughs> uh, find a, you know, be able to jump to a particular place. I don't remember that we got that. Oh, yeah. you did. We did? Yeah. yeah. Ten point. I think it was at the... Um, yeah, it was at the December meeting. Do we have any idea how many people and are how doing much? this? That, that was my question. Does anybody look at it? And, and if how do we find that out? I know that Tom does, because he's told me he does. What? Tom. Papanek. Papanek. Knows what? Looks at the, looks at the meeting. Oh, actually I'm sorry. Watches it. Does anybody? Do we have statistics for that, Tom? On a personal note, I found it useful, so I watched it so I could place names and faces. So, so I wasn't such a shock for me. So we had two people. Yeah, two people. <laughs> yeah, I will find out from live stream if we can get some analytics. Oh, that'd be great. About how often it's being viewed. So maybe we can get that at just some information at the next meeting. I remember we had a report, but then we had some more questions about 
Um, because they had given us different breakdowns, but it didn't answer all of our questions. Oh, I think Rebecca followed up with them. And that's what I'm asking about. You followed up with Granicus on the breakdown of costs. Because, because the question was just how much would it cost to just to add the component of being able to jump, you know, not have to sit through the whole thing to try Actually, to find out what you're looking for. The whole for. thing would, that, in order to do that, you have to do, the, if I'm not mistaken, you have to do the full upfront 8,000. Well, that was our question 9, because 000. that's what it looked like it might be, but I thought Rebecca was going to go back and ask a few more questions to see if there was a big way to break it down further. You do have to pay that full fee in order to get, they don't break up their services into pieces like that. You have to pay the initial service fee in order to get any of the services. And it's that full 2000. I mean, you, you can't, you can't get any of this broken further down. All right. In other words, it would be 8,800 for startup and then 2000 a month for ongoing. Costs. Because the thing about the summary minutes now is they, you really do have to go look at the tape if you have a question about something, you know, exactly what was said. And I, you know, as a commissioner, I do go back and I, I look at stuff just to kind of try to remember. Um, I don't take verbatim notes of things. So it's helpful to be able to either have minutes that spell out more detail about what was discussed or what, you know, what somebody said or what the vote was on or to have the ability to go look at the tape and not have to sit there for three hours to find what you're trying to find. Can I respond but to that? You can fast forward on the tape. Have you tried that? I haven't tried it, but my understanding is that that's how it's structured. It's, it's the well, you can move the little line, but right. I mean. Does, you know. the, does the little line, okay. Wait, Paul had something to add? I, I, I just wanted to say, oh. oh. Go ahead. If that's something that's a priority, um, there, there are ways to manually index, and I can look into how much time that would take if that's a priority. That would be good. I would appreciate that. Just as a point of clarification for me, uh, for a lot, some of the meetings that we've had in the past, we've recorded it and had a transcription, in which case you could do a search on different topics. Um, and and the, the decision was made to have this videotaped instead of an audio transcription. No, we used to have somebody just take minutes. Well, we right. would we would we would tape it, audio tape it too, but that yeah. that is also a, a cost. Well, I was just thinking it, it probably is easier, and it's hard. It's easier to, to search on a transcription. Right. Um, but it it was not an exact transcription, and it was an incredible consumption of time for staff. To did you all contracted out the transcription? We did. So that would be in lieu of the videotape. Right. And I and and to tell you the truth, it's pretty inexpensive since we use uh, the World Wide Web to do it. I mean, there's people in, in India that, that does this for pretty inexpensively. And it's a 24-hour turnaround. And they we, transcribe uh, it over the... They we, we send them the audio tape. Oh. They transcribe and give us a... a so you have a digital audio and you just email it to them and then they email right. you back a PDF right our audio quality has been not been very good oh. so that would be another issue it was just a question yeah no I mean no, those it's, are, it's, it's a, just a good thing to to think yeah. about yeah I, I think anything that allows the public or the Commission members or you know a couple of years from now we're like when do, what do we you know decide on that to be able to find the information otherwise you know why take minutes at all frankly um, I think it's useful to be able to go back and, and find out what really happened and who made a decision or what was talked about, what was the intent. Uh, the thing that I was about to ask is, I haven't scrubbed through, so I don't know, but on many scrub through features, it gives you a time. And if there were just simply on the summary notes, an uh, you know, hour 1.2, one, one hour and 20 minutes into the meeting, that's when this topic came up. Two hours into the meeting, that's when this topic came up. And if the scrubbing allows you to go roughly to that spot, that would be a possible way to, to do it. That would help. The other thing to think about 
is just when we made the decision to go to the video versus the, you know, some other approach like you described, I would say it was a trade-off. And one thing it constrains us to always meet here because of the facility setup. So I think we should also think about kind of the, what did we lose by not having the going to other branch branches for uh, having our meetings in terms of the access to the people in those communities to, to come. I mean, they can come here, but the reality is most of people don't, right? And so, you know, it's just, and I'm not saying that it's not a worthwhile trade-off, but it was a trade-off that we made deliberately, right? So in our conversation, and, and you may not be aware of this as a new commissioner, you know, we did say, okay, we think it's worth it to be able to, to not have minutes being written out and all the staff time that it was taking, but the trade-off is we're always going to be here in order to make that happen. So, you know, that's just another component. And maybe in, you know, we want to look at some options like, I don't know if we want to look at what it would cost to um, upgrade our audio and then try <coughs> using a transcription service just to see if that is something we want to do. Um, it would allow us to travel, certainly, uh, more easily. And and then people, if it's a searchable, tra is it a searchable transcript where you can put in a word and? <laughs> exactly, well that's what, that's how it comes. It comes. Right, <laughs> so then we could post the searchable transcripts on. I have a question though, I, it just seems to me, I, to have somebody who's not familiar with the context trying to transcribe it, might mean it looks like some of my emails that are transcribed. <laughs> well, our, our experience says it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's not perfect. So you would have to have somebody go through it. And, you know, but Clean it wouldn't it. take as long as actually transcribing something. <clears throat> um, whatever happened to court stenographers? <laughs> they They're pricey. Travel with us. They're pricey. They're not <laughs> They're pricey. <laughs> actually, Derek Moore's wife is a... Yeah, but they're, they're not cheap, yeah, definitely. But, <laughs> no. but, and another alternative, too, as long as we're talking about things, is, you know, the city of Santa Rosa upgraded their meeting room um, video transcribing system. Um, I think I talked to Julie about this a few, like, a few months ago. And I thought could, they were still talking about exactly what they were going to do. I thought they had upgraded it. I don't know that they made a decision. Because there's still ask. a question about whether they're going to continue to support the community me me media. I oh, know that. I think that's a little bit different, but um, that's that's different. But anyway, there was a possibility that you know we could talk to them and see about meeting in their meeting room and using their system. I have a question. Has it been a significant improvement in your time? Yes. I get a Definitely. nod from two. Yes. Saves her a couple of days, essentially, and me at least a half. So I don't think we're proposing going back to having you guys doing it, but there may be other alternatives to what we're doing now that could be cost effective and provide the content. So I don't, you know, I think saving you guys time is really important, and I'm not proposing we go back to that. I'm just, it sounds right. like if there's some other alternatives, we should look at those as well. Right, I would agree with that. And, we, and, and I've made notes about the transcription, manually indexing, and um, scrubbing and timekeeping. And maybe this is something that audio. could show up at the April. We could revisit at the April meeting, not at the March meeting. Actually, I think right now we're just doing it through the March or April, March meeting. March. Right. Oh, we had a six-month contract. Oh, is that right? Yeah, well, then I guess we better doing, decide. Well, we, we can certainly come back for March 25th with some items. How, how much was it a month? It depends on how long the meeting is. Ah, okay. It's about six hundred dollars for six hundred dollars for the usual meeting. Now this one will be more because it's a longer meeting. That's right. Much longer meeting. Do you remember how much the audio cost? Um, for the transcription, it was it was about I want to say sixty dollars an hour. So it depended on how long it took the person. It's and it's been pretty accurate because we, uh, this goes back to 508 compliant. We have a lot of our text uh, that's on our website or if we're doing curriculum, 
needs to be transcribed. So uh, if you're if you're blind, your reader can read it on the internet. So that's what we've, we've done. We've also done. We have a uh, a journal of lifelong learning. We do called No K N O W, and we're, we transcribe uh, the audio interviews we have. So uh, we, we have to put those up. So it's been pretty accurate. Okay, that's something to look at. Thank you. All right. Um, any further discussion on? I have one other question. Yes. Is it possible to set up another another site, like in Petal? I mean, if we're moving to a different site, is it, it has easy? to be a relatively large site. Petaluma's. Room. I don't know whether we would have to pay for the travel or not. Okay. But it would be a problem in a lot of our meeting rooms, which are so that are so small. Mm -hmm. That's right. We would never get to go to Cloverdale again, and they fed us. I don't know. We could find room there. Um, all right. Public comment? All right, then. Advisory board appointments. Helena? Well, I have the paper right here. here. Oh, wait. Here. here I think I got it. I got it. Okay. So, um, I make a motion to adopt the resolution, the appointments by resolution, um, for Padma Cattell to the vacant position on the Greenville Library Advisory Board term ending June 30th, 2015. And also, I move by resolution that the Sonoma County Library Commission appoint Robin Reich to a new position on the Greenville Library Advisory Board term ending June 30th, 2016. Second? Sure. Okay. Any discussion? Public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and I think, oh, that does it for us. So our next meeting is here at 930 in the morning, March 25th.